begin by drawing a tangent to the circle. The red dot is exact point where the tangent touches the circle's edge. From that point, draw a chord across the circle. This does two things. First of all, it splits the circle into two segments and creates an angle between chord and tangent. Now in the other segment, create an angle by drawing a line from each end of the chord to the same point on the circumference. Now according to the alternate segment theorem, the angle between a tangent and a chord, which is this, is the same as the angle in the alternate segment, which is this. These two angles are the same. This is also true for the left hand side chord and the left side of the tangent. There's an angle between chord and tangent, and then in the alternate segment, an angle is created at the circumference. And according to the theorem, the angle between the chord and the tangent is the same as the angle in the alternate segment. In this video, we set out to prove that this must be true. Notice that this results in a triangle inside the circle where the corners of the triangle lie on the circumference of the circle. Our knowledge of triangles will help us prove the theorem. So let's start from scratch and just leave the triangle in the circle with no angles. Let's mark the angles and give them labels. I'm going to give the top two angles a value of A and B, and I'm going to give the bottom angle the value of X. But I want to express the value X in terms of A and B so we can rewrite that, and that will come in handy later. The sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, so 180 degrees must equal A plus B plus X. To get the value of X in terms of A and B, we simply need to subtract A and B from both sides of the equation. So that gives us that 180 degrees minus a plus b equals x. So x is given in terms of a and b. Next I'm going to make use of the radius of the circle and I'm going to draw one radius through the angle b and another through the angle x. The addition of the radius through both angles does several things. One thing that has happened is that we've introduced an angle at center and I want to get the value of the center angle and finally, we've created a triangle within the main triangle. I'll start by figuring out the center angle. So hopefully you remember the theorem that the angle at center is twice the angle at the edge, which means that the value of the center angle is 2a. Let's put the other values back. Next, if we consider the triangle that was created within the main triangle, two of its edges are the length of a radius. So we have a triangle with two edges that are the same length. This must be an isosceles triangle. Let's put two marks across the edges of equal length. The base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal. And given that we have the top angle 2a, we can figure out the base angles in terms of the top angle. I'm going to represent the base angles with a red dot. And I'm going to give the base angles a value y for now. The sum of the angles is 180 degrees. That must be equal to 2a plus 2y. We can factor out 2 on the right hand side and that gives us that 180 degrees equals 2 times brackets a plus y. And now if we divide both sides by 2 we get that 90 equals a plus y and then to get y we simply subtract a from both sides and that gives us that the base angles which equal y equals 90 minus a. And now we can clean up a little bit so we are now in a position to figure out the angle between the right chord and the tangent. How are we going to do this? Well, we know that the red angle equals 90 degrees minus A, but there's another theorem that helps us understand this whole angle. And that is a theorem that says the angle between a radius and a tangent is 90 degrees. So if we subtract the red angle from the angle between the radius and the tangent, it will give us the blue angle. So the angle between the radius and the tangent is 90 degrees. If we want the angle that's between the chord and the tangent, we have to subtract the red angle. So that is minus 90 minus A, which is 90 minus, well, that's minus 90 if we're distributing the brackets. And minus times minus is plus A, the 90 and the minus 90 cancels, which leaves the angle A, which means the angle between the right chord and the tangent must be equal to A, which is the same 
as the angle in the alternate segment, as we predicted. So we're halfway there. Let's see if we can calculate the angle between the left chord and the tangent. This angle is relatively simple to find. Consider that the tangent line is a straight line, so the sum of the angles across it is 180 degrees. But we already know the value of two of these angles. The blue angle is the same as the angle in the alternate segment, so that's A, and the middle angle is X. And that must mean that the orange angle, the angle between the chord and the tangent, must have the value of 180 degrees minus a plus x. But what is 180 degrees minus the sum of a and x? We just need to look at the large triangle. The sum of angles in the triangle is 180 degrees. And if we subtract a and x from that, we get the angle b. The angle between the left chord and the tangent must be b, which is the same as the value in the alternate segment. So there you have it, the proof of the theorem, the angle between tangent and chord is the same as the angle in the alternate segment.